Hey guys, welcome back. This is Pixel Frank, and today I'm going to go through a couple of tips on how to get a better start in surviving the abyss. So, without further ado, let's uh, dive straight into it. Now, a short disclaimer this game is in early access. A lot of these tips are subject to change, and if so, I will have an updated video on it. Uh, so, stay tuned. Uh, so the first tip is as you start out and uh, I'm on my second playthrough uh, at day 135 and uh, one thing that uh, I started out the wrong way on my first game in my first game um, is that I didn't started uh, I didn't start researching early on and in my second game I already had a, had a plan in mind and uh, I focused research as um as the start so as you pop in uh into the game you have your central central hub you start building a lot of the buildings that uh, that are required like oxygen uh generator the coal generator and then you what you want to do is pretty much have a, a basic research lab down as soon as possible so that you can uh, pretty much just uh, pump out a lot of uh, research data um with that said, with that said, the first th the first thing that you want to do at the start of the game is uh, besides the research lab, and this is this should be tip number two, is uh, you should pretty much um, gather info about what resources are available in the vicinity of uh, of your uh, of your central hub through sonar towers. Now, I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to use sonar towers and uh, sure, this is going to be pretty much uh, part of the same uh, of the same tip. Now, a lot of I've saw I've seen a lot of people they put down the sonar uh, towers uh, close to their hub, uh, pretty much centralized so that so that they can cover cover an area uh, uh, around the tower. But what I actually did even in my first game is I tried to select the furthest point available from my uh, central hub and I put down actually two um, two sonar towers, one on one of the ends and the other on the other end so that all this, the, all this area I could, I could literally just uh, um, discover, discover without, without the need of uh, putting down um, an outpost or or pretty much a, a, a light tower. Now, of course, uh, we are going to go into uh, into detail on light towers pretty much pretty soon. But before we do that, the first thing that you want to do um, when putting down light towers, and as you as you pretty much just scale with the game, right? Uh, the first thing that you want to do is uh, look for habitats. Now, habitats are going to help you with with both food. If you want food, you can put down a, a protein harvester onto a, a habitat. You can uh, use fauna traps to fuel uh, to fuel your cloning labs with uh, a genomes. And of course, you can use uh, you you can use uh, habitats with uh, biomass generators. And uh, we are going to go uh, in, into this uh, later on. But first thing first, what you want to look out for, right? And uh, this is this is something that you that you want to make sure of is that light towers consume a lot of power, so you want to make sure, right? So five power, and uh, you want to make sure that um, <clears throat> they are profitable. What I mean by profitable is that you get your your money's worth, right? And uh, my first light tower, uh, as an example here in this game, went down. Are trying to capture free habitats so all of these are pretty much abundant habitats and what I started and and what I did next is okay now I have my habitats I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of things down what are what are pretty much the tech the tech that I want to focus on in early game Right, so we have two towers. We have uh, pretty much a, a balanced, uh, a balanced uh, income of resources. Um, of course, they are limited. Um, the first thing uh, that you want to uh, to do and research is uh, let me just give you a few tips on researching. So this should be tip number three, I guess, or or, or four. I think it's already five. <laughs> so. Um, 
So here's the thing. Um, one thing that you want to uh, go for early on is pretty much... Um, it should be here somewhere. Is Yeah, the coal efficiency upgrade for the tier 1. And then um, you should try and also get the O2 output upgrade right from the get-go. These are going to help you have a better output of oxygen and uh, energy. And with that, you are going to you are going to help yourself to, to stabilize in an environment where resources are very limited early game. So you have nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing in infinite yet, yet. Um, but as, as you research those, the next one is, should be the coal extractor, then, um, either the drill extractor or the alloy furnace, but the drill ex extractor should be, uh, whatever you have, you have close by. Now, I think I went for the coal extraction um, uh, first. And then, if I recall correctly, I went for uh, the drill extractor because I had concrete, uh, a concrete extraction point, which is pretty much an in infinite uh, amount of concrete that, that you can have. Um, of course, the first time I put it down, and this is interesting, the first time I put it down, it showed that it was infinite, and now it shows that it's finite. I don't know what's happening there. Oh, the coal is infinite, but not, but not the concrete. Oh, I learn ev, <laughs> I I learn new things every day. So that's pretty much uh, the first couple of tech uh, tech pieces that you want to pick up. Uh, so in resources, you want to pick up the coal extractor and the drill. Uh, and yellow in that order these these are these aren't uh, that important uh, I mean <laughs> I'm pretty much late game and I still haven't picked these up and I haven't used them um, then in power you want to pick up the coal efficiency the coal efficiency upgrade too you want um, the coal uh, generator power upgrade uh, tier 2 is going to cost you 150 and then tier 3 is going to cost you 300 uh, research data then in life support, what I went for is carbohydrate farm first. And then I think I went for the protein harvester and the protein harvester upgrade. Uh, but in hindsight, uh, you should go for the carb carbohydrate farm first and then the O2 output. Um, then you would have uh, the garden dome um, uh, next or... Either, either the Garden Dome or the Mess Hall, but I went for the Garden Dome because it does give, uh, it does have some oxygen output, plus one, and it does improve uh, air quality. Um, and then, last but not the least, um, I went for, I think, yeah, I went for the Rate Per Day Attachment Module, which is pretty much an attachment to your lab research. And this is going to be a uh, give you is going to be giving you a flat amount of plus eight research or something like that, which is much better than the multiplier. This right now is pretty much useless in the current state of game because it's only twenty percent, but it's a, um, but the twenty percent improvement that the multiplier only applies to your one lab. Uh, initially, I thought it applies to the entire research. Right to the to all of my uh, research labs, but it doesn't. So the rate per day attachment is just plain better. And then for the cloning, um, of course you want slots, a lot of them. But uh, we are going to discuss that that later. So right now what you have is pretty much you're upgrading your efficiency for the coal generator and the uh, uh, O2 output. And what you want to uh, make sure of next is, uh, this is, should be tip number six, is that you want to put down marine sta stabilizers ASAP. So no matter what, how many fauna traps you want to use, the first thing that you want to do is put down a marine stabilizer so that it replenishes the fauna. Uh, because every fauna trap is going to start uh, depleting your, your habitats. So what is going to happen is you want to position your your marine stabilizer in such a way that it um, that it at least covers two habitats. Okay, 
in this case this is free this is this is golden but um uh, you will notice that uh, biomass generators and protein harvesters uh, do not deplete faunas. They just use up the fauna as uh, uh, the habitats. They just use up the, the habitat as is. So the marine stabilizer does not affect this yet. It might come in an upcoming update. Um, things might change because right now these power generators do, do seem a little bit OP without having to consume anything and they just... Uh, they just provide uh, an, a net 28 output. So that is uh, that is really good right now. So um, as of now, you can use them uh, with only with only one crew too. So uh, I've never ran out of, uh, of my uh, habitats. Uh, the fauna never ran out. I can use them just with one crew. You don't need to. And uh, yeah, it's, it is very efficient. It is very efficient. It does use some energy and oxygen, but uh, it does play out well. Now, uh, tip number seven should be that, um, of course, uh, you want a cloning lab ASAP. And um, no matter what you do, you'd want at least two uh, fauna traps down and a marine stabilizer to, uh, to continuously supply your cloning lab. And you want a uh, maximum crew because that will improve, uh, that will pretty much just improve um, the, um, the chance of you getting a clone. Because uh, as you can see, as you can see, there is a chance for it to fail. So right now, if I would, if I would do this, if I would begin the cloning, I would only have a 41% chance per clone for it to uh, to work out. Uh, otherwise, it's just it's just a failed cloning, and you don't get a clone. Um, but other than that, but other than that, um, cloning facilities and habitats go hand in hand. So every time you want a new cloning facility, you would you you want to make sure that you can sustain it with uh, with habitats and with the marine stabilizer. So I usually build them in in, in cluster all of them in one place so that I don't forget about them. Um, also, uh, clo um, coal extractors. Uh, right now, we, we have a coal extractor here. Clone extractor, well, um, they supply up to three coal generators if having fully upgraded efficiency in the tech tree. So that means that one coal extraction point will, will supply three coal generators. Um, and that and that pretty much and that pretty much will help you uh, a lot in how to plan in how to plan things. So if you build more than four clone generators, uh, coal generators, um, you will need uh, deposits, coal deposits to to sustain it. So uh, it is good in in early game to plan around having only three coal generators to work with. And, um, well, that's pretty much what, uh, what I had to do. So I extended with two, uh, light towers and the third one, and the third one I set up in such a way so that I turned off this one so that I could, um, uh, pretty much <laughs> build free biomass generators, which are going to be the bread and butter of your energy, uh, early to mid game, uh, because these are really good. These are... These don't use anything. They just need to be crude. Uh, you put them onto uh, a habitat and it just works. That's that's pretty much it. And they do provide a, a fair amount of uh, energy as well. So uh, yeah, um, that was pretty much tip eight and nine. I'm not I'm not uh, uh, counting them right now. So um, so biomass generators early to mid game are the best power generator uh, best power generators as of now um and of course um this pretty much this pretty much hit hit our uh, our our maximum uh, maximum objectives that we can we can uh, achieve in uh, in this place in the central hub and um of course um oh another another quick tip is um the exploration submarine now i built myself one but the only reason I needed to use it, so the only thing I used it so far, um, is 
to get myself out of um out of bad situation um and he, here here is the thing exploration submarines can light light up resources you are in need of but you are blocked by so um if I, if for example you want uh you don't have quartz glass right let's say you don't have uh you're out of quartz glass right uh one thing that you can do one thing that you can do is send out an expedition with your uh with your exploration submarine to one of these uncommon habitats you can just explore them all right you can just explore one of these that will lit up uh, the place temporarily and while while you have uh lightning uh lighting uh temporarily you can put down a mining relay okay and using that mining relay you can tell your mining ships to come all the way here and pick up uh the quartz glass or the concrete deposit if you uh, if you need it and that literally um saved this playthrough this playthrough i think two times one one once i ran out of concrete and the other time i ran out of uh, quartz glass that was like oh no i done goofed it <laughs> you know but uh yeah and then uh what uh yeah of course another tip uh, regarding uh, regarding uh exploration is the biomes now let me just um let me just get into the map and um these these places these places like uh, dark glows kelp forest are all biomes that you can explore with your with your exploration submarine and uh the one thing that you want to do right the one thing that you want to do is make sure is make sure that uh certain is to pretty much know that certain biomes will will facilitate or will, will help you with certain types of resources that you require for example kelp forests are really good uh for habitats as you can see i have a kelp forest here and it is loaded with habitats if i wanted to put down uh um biomass generators or i wanted to create some some food um get some food or uh anything else i could i could just uh, put down an outpost here come out with uh with uh, a lighting tower a light tower and uh put down a lot of generators here and uh and and pretty much just go from there uh another biome that we explored uh, that we wanted to explore is uh the dark glows but we already we already went into it a bit we discovered it using um we actually discovered that biome using uh, light towers and we found our first oil uh oil um, field uh out here so uh oil, oil fields and oil uh generators are pretty much uh end game uh power generators and we already found our funded our or our first oil well and uh yeah so that's pretty much regarding biomes um that that tend to be resource specific now it is the second time i find uh in this biome i an oil field and that's why i think that certain resources are are bound to certain biomes um such as with kelp uh kelp having uh, a much more abundant uh uh hab number of habitats right and uh yeah that's uh that's pretty much tip number let's say um 11. now tip number 12 should be um outpost placement now i think it was pretty much mid game i i, I got to to my first outpost placement mid game and the and the only reason was uh for the for the outpost is to try and look for uh, uh huge chunks of uh, resources as in i wanted um uh, a huge uh my first uh quartz glass extraction point and i wanted my first um what is it iron ore extraction point here so we started visiting two biomes in order to try and explore 
uh, extraction points, which would yield us much, uh, a much better or more, a much bigger amount of, uh, of resources. And uh, yeah, um, of course, iron ore can be uh, can be um, transformed um, into can be converted into uh, steel using uh, using the alloy uh, furnace. Uh, in this gameplay, uh, in this game, I have two set up and they are doing their job. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much uh, what you should use outpost for. And always know that an outpost is not as good. I mean, of course, it generates power, right? Uh, an outpost does have a base uh, generation, uh, power generation and uh, oxygen generation of four. But the thing is with Outpost, they have a, a reduced radius, all right? And uh, that's why I kind of pre prefer light towers. They do use um, energy, but the thing is that they have a much bigger radius and they can, uh, they can just uh, uh, include a lot of resources under one, under one uh, area, okay? Uh, just uh, the the same way it goes here. So we have a marine stab stabilizer for uh, for the co for the common habitat, and then we have a biomass generator uh, providing us with some more power, and then we have a drill extractor as well uh, for the quartz extraction point. So well, yeah, uh, another thing is uh, to note is that mining relays tend to go much further. Okay, so this is another tip: mining relays tend to go much for, further than uh, than the maximum uh, uh, I mean the limit of, of light that you can uh, that you can have so it does go out far so if you want to pick up a few resources that you uh, that you don't see but you know they are there you can just put it down and look look at that it has one iron small iron ore yeah it does have it included okay um, and last but not the least, uh, one thing that I, uh, that you need to know about Outpost is, uh, it is very hard to connect up, uh, uh, tunnels because tunnels, you cannot build tunnels in, uh, in darkness, but what you can build is power lines. So, uh, to me, it is, it is much easier to connect up the entire, the entire, uh, power grid and uh, have only one power grid you see as you can see i connected up all my outposts to uh to my main hub uh using power lines uh this might change in the future i don't know if what this is intended right now but one thing is for sure knowing that you have one grid and you have uh and you can easily calculate pow power supply and power demand it is uh, it is a it is a good thing, because oxygen it is easier to deal with locally than uh, than power generation. Uh, power generation is uh, is a thing because you know if I if I ge uh, generate power with a biomass generator right here, I have a a surplus of uh, of energy. Whereas here, in my uh, in my at my main hub, it could be it could be in deficit. So. It is actually a good thing that you can connect up uh, all all your outposts to the main hub, and you can have one united power grid. It makes it easier for me, at least. But uh, yeah, um, well, all in all, that was this was a pretty long video, and I don't think I included every everything I wanted to talk about. But hey, I think these were thirteen plus tips or something like that to get a better start in surviving the abyss. Now, if you like the video, you know what to do. All you have to do is subscribe, a like, uh, leave a comment down below with what tip would you give me? All right, um, share, share the knowledge, share the tips. Let's see, let's see how far and how efficient we can be uh, on our upcoming gameplays. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. This was Pixel Frank, and I'm going to see you guys next time. Have a great one. Bye.